Welcome to Ask Kalefi, the podcast that dives into real-life problems that plumbing and HVAC technicians face in the field. We're your hosts from the Kalefi Tech Support Team. I'm Greg Tubbs. And I'm Dan Furkus. Welcome. We look forward to sharing some stories from our tech calls and using our background and expertise to make your days a little easier. Hey there, welcome back. Here we are, episode 12. Yeah, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for coming back. So today we're going to talk about choosing the correct mixing valve for point of distribution right at the water heater. Absolutely, that's a big topic. We get a lot of questions on how to select that. We certainly do. And, you know, a lot of it is looking at what the ASSE standards are, right? Right, the ASSE 1017 standards for point of distribution. Right, and if you kind of want to be able to tell them apart if you're kind of a newbie at this asse 1017 1017 comes before 1070 yes it does numerically it comes before 1070 it also in the system the plumbing system it comes before the 1070 valve in the system as well because yeah you're right 1070 is going to be at the point of use you got it we get the question a lot about having the right size mixing valve and it's really not them asking question directly we got to kind of get it out of them you know they'll call us and say yep you know i've got a valve of yours and i'm thinking of installing or it's already installed and it doesn't seem to be delivering hot water correctly it's hunting right right so we usually have to kind of pry it out of them hey what size piping you're dealing with there and what is the realistic Worst case scenario, flow rate you need to deal with. Right, exactly. You know, what flow re- What are the flow requirements? You know, I mean, I hey, isn't it true, Greg? You just select the mixing valve based on what pipe size is coming out of the water heater. Don't isn't you? Isn't that the way it goes? Don't you do it. No. Don't oh, do it. Jeez. Well, that's how it gets done. <laughs> it, it is. More often than not, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, if it's a guy in the field that needs to do a replacement because he's pulled up on the job, he, he's discovered that the valve is either lime scaled up and beyond repair, and it's time to replace it. So what are we going to do? What's what's the thing to do? Well, it's a two-inch pipe. Must need a two-inch valve. I'm going to go over to the parts store, and I'm going to get a, a two-inch, two-inch valve. valve. Absolutely. And then they get it installed, and the thing doesn't work quite right. Then you find out, well, the building doesn't have recirc, you know, and maybe I should back up a little bit here and say, a two-inch valve for all practical purposes, if we're talking about like our yeah, 5231. right. That guy's got an 8.8 yeah. gallons per minute minimum flow requirement. Yeah, well, and that's, what you know, so we, we joked about selecting it based on pipe size and certainly don't want you to go that route. Unfortunately, it happens enough, but Greg's right. You know, minimum, every mixing valve out there, whether it's point of use or point of distribution, we're going to talk uh, point of distribution now, has a minimum and maximum flow requirement. Yes. And you have to work within that minimum and maximum flow requirement or have a way to make up the minimum flow requirement. You got it. Biggest offenders, as far as like systems are concerned, it's existing apartment buildings where, let's be honest, the, the building owner doesn't want to put more into it than what, what they have to. Right. So if they don't have research, and we both know almost not all every, of them don't. Yeah. Yeah. Not everyone's going to and far more won't. Right. So... Right, right off the bat, your your back's kind of against the wall. Or an old folks' home tomb, that's another one that we see a lot of. It's existing, and everything's buried. So right. you have no way of really making up that minimum. It's very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, so you want to um, make sure as you're selecting it that you you know what the minimum flow requirement of the, of the product you're selecting is. Um, also know that you're working within the design specifications of that valve so cleffy rates all of their product out to their maximum flow rates out to a 20 psi pressure drop right so you know you'd look at our two inch mix cal uh that unit is going to be 8.8 gallons per minute minimum and 70 gallons per minute maximum at a 20 psi pressure drop so that's the other thing to keep in mind you're if if you need 70 gallons per minute Great, that'll do it. It'll get you 70 gallons per minute, but you're going to have a 20 PSI pressure drop. So keep that in mind. If your system pressure is only 50 PSI and you need 70 gallons per minute, and once you achieve that 70 gallons per minute, your building pressure drops to 30 PSI and that becomes unacceptable, well, then we maybe need to look at a different product. Right, right. Something like the Legio mix with a a bigger flow 
and we'll we'll get down that that rabbit hole eventually right so but yeah like you're getting back to it if you're not hitting the minimum we get that question too well what am i supposed to do what can i do well at that point it's almost too little too late the building owner's not going to want to put a research in well sometimes you just can't i mean to no. think about trying to get a research into an existing building with you know, risers and dead legs and, you know, try to eliminate dead legs in the system. Right. And that's darn near impossible. Right. So you could look at, you know, high-low mixing valves as options. Yeah. High-lows are probably going to be your best option, really, for a job like that. Mm -hmm. And again, you're a big chunk of change, but if you look at the cost of something like one of those high-flow, just the high-flow alone is pretty big money. That's a big hunk of brass. It is. But look at what it's going to take and cost to add a... A research, at a research line. A lot of labor and a yeah. lot of parts, and it might not even be done right when you're finished. Right, right. So a high-low. Let's talk about the high-low a little bit. Yeah, so the high-low is going to have two mixing valves. It's going to have you know, a low-flow valve, which has a low minimum and a lower maximum flow rate. For example, like our 521 uh, mix cal is one gallon per minute minimum flow rate. It'll go out to about a 14 GPM maximum flow rate. And then you also put in one of the higher flow mixing valves that's going to have, you know, like a 4.4 gallon per minute to, or even 8.8 gallon per minute up to 70. Depending depending on on what your range needs to be. Right. But yeah, you're right on the money. And then we add a pressure reducing valve in there, a PRV as kind of a balancer. Right. So once, once the system starts to give more draw, it will allow flow through that high flow. Yeah, you kind of set the PRV for the like the fall off pressure of the mixing valve. Right. So if you know that the smaller mixing valve is one gallon per minute minimum, 14 gallon per minute max at a 20 PSI pressure drop, and you know that your minimum flow rate is 8.8 gallons per minute on your high flow, then you look at your flow characteristic chart and you set that pressure reducing valve so that when that um, smaller mixing valve reaches eight or nine gallons per minute, you it's going to now open up the larger mixing valve. Right. That's exactly it. So that allows you kind of to use the smaller mixing valve to meet the minimum flow requirement of the bigger mixing valve, and then the bigger mixing valve takes over from there. Perfect. Well, and from there, we have electronic mixing valves. We sure do. Yeah. Uh, we have the Legio mix, which is a great valve, uh, big flow numbers out of it. Yeah, huge flow numbers, and the benefit to that is, you know, it's a three-way ball valve. So with three ba- three-way ball valve, you get really high flow numbers at a, at a lower pressure drop. Lower pressure drop and a smaller valve body. Right. Yeah, that's the that's really the key. So, you know, we talked about that two-inch thermostatic mixing valve with the 8.8 gallon per minute minimum and 70 gallon per minute maximum. Boy, Greg, what do our one-inch lead gel mix give you? 94 gallons a minute at a 20 PSI drop. Wow. So, so that's quite a bit higher than a 2-inch right. thermostatic. So you're carrying in 2-inch pipe, and you're going to reduce right at the valve, right at the valve and go down to 1-inch. And people kind of they, they sort of freak out about that. Yeah, we see our electronic mixing valves really commonly piped even 1 to 2 pipe sizes smaller than the connection type. And actually, that's an okay. Or larger, I should say. And sure. It's okay, though, because you're dropping uh, velocity in a bigger pipe. Right, right. You don't have to worry about wearing, wearing that copper out. Yeah, but what's the biggest benefit of jumping up to the electronic? I really love the fact that it has its own cleaning function. It self-cleans. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It does that anti-clog function, but even bigger than that is minimum flow requirements. I mean, we we talk so much about minimum flow requirements with those thermostatic valves. That one-inch Legio Mix Electronic, 94 gallons per minute at a 20 PSI pressure drop, but now your minimum flow requirement is 3.1 gallons per minute. Right. So if you have a research that's nominally sized right around three gallons a minute and someone just opens a small faucet, it's going to work. Absolutely is. And then you step down to an even smaller valve. Say you can get away with stepping down to the smaller valve, even though you have two-inch piping to the building, but you suddenly do the math and go, we only need 30 gallons a minute through this. Right. 
Well, and I think that's the big thing is doing the math because, you know, you don't know if the plumber or installer before you sized it based on pipe size right. or actually building requirements. So, you know, going back and understanding the actual use of the building, you may find out that, you know, you can step down in valve size. It's going to work, perform better. Your pressure drops might be a little less. It's just going to be more adequate. Right. In a perfect world, if there is such a thing, a properly sized recert, all done up, installed with, you know, balancing and everything to meet the minimum. I mean, that's that's where a system is going to work at its. That's optimal. ideal. Yeah, yeah that, that, it's just ideal. It certainly is. But we we know that a lot of this stuff is going in as a replacement. Yeah. For something old and antiquated or too expensive to repair. Right. So, well, and understanding what's in there from a flow requirement. I mean, if you have an old, you know, mixing valve in place and it's not a cluffy mixing valve and you're unsure with selecting our, you know, what product of ours to select, give us a call. You know, Greg or I will help you cross reference it and pick the right, right product matchup. Yeah. And, I, you know, we really take pride in being able to take your guys' phone calls and emails. And trying to help you solve your problems and help you get the right product before you even start the job. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing worse than getting out there with a product. And we, we get those phone calls all the time, too, where it's too late. Somebody told them to use it or they just decided, well, I'm going to use this size because that's what's here. Right. And now we're kind of, you're holding the bag. Well, you get one of two things. Either it doesn't perform it doesn't perform for you. Either it's undersized or oversized because right. it's a different flow requirement than what you have, um, or you select a product that you could have that is oversized, and the cost, the upfront cost, costs you know the building owner more or, or creates an objection on the price side, and you could have you could have dropped down to a, a properly sized, more properly sized one at a better, more affordable cost. Absolutely, you know. Do a little bit of uh, scouting up front. Yeah, absolutely. Scout it out and and really take the time before you just go throwing a valve in. Well, and the biggest thing Greg and I want for you is that whatever you put in is going to work right. Yeah. It's going to perform for you. We know all our products perform well. Right. But they got to be applied right. And that's our job is to help you apply it right. Absolutely. Well, I think that was a pretty good episode. What do you want to talk about next week? I don't know, Greg. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> I think for sure we're talking about water quality, and we are going to have a guest on next week. Oh, I think Mark's going to join us next week. That is correct. Well, see you next week. Thank you for tuning in. If you ever need help, please feel free to contact our tech support team anytime at techsupport.us at com. Or call us during our business hours at 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Time at 414-238-2360.